What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So, just finished episode five of the Mr. McMahon documentary. This episode was titled Family Business, and they get into obviously Stephanie and Shane and Linda McMahon getting involved in WWE on screen. Um, they started showing their introductions of how Shane got involved, how Linda got involved, and even how Stephanie got involved. And they also end up talking about kind of the the reason why Shane ended up leaving um, many years ago, the first time, the first go around. And, and that, that whole scene, uh, I definitely want to talk to y'all about because um, Paul Heyman you know, kind of recounts what happened and how things kind of transpired. But they started off the episode <clears throat> talking about the physical abuse that Vince McMahon had received from his stepfather and also the implications of uh, some sexual abuse that Vince had received from his mother. And Vince said in a documentary that he doesn't tend to like to look back at his childhood he kind of just chalk you know put he kind of i guess you can say deems it as it is what it is and and just tries to move forward things happen and he just tries to move forward which obviously breaks down kind of his mindset on how he is like he you know is in a situation well he was in a situation where he's the top guy he's the one that makes decisions he's the one that has all the power and he doesn't want to be ever in that situation where he's not in control uh the way he viewed it, it was like you know after the beating if you're still alive then you won so he doesn't go back he doesn't want to go back to that so that's how he kind of operates himself more or less which honestly trauma like that you should definitely go talk to someone because you don't even realize subconsciously what type of ramifications it can have on your psyche because if you view things like i have to be this way i have to be this ruthless businessman in a sense to stay at the top and not you know and make sure that you know i'm never in a compromising situation where i don't have control you know that can lead to you doing or saying some things that can you know you know kind of put you in a compromising position so uh, it was very interesting to hear his you know thought process of the past like he just doesn't want to think about it which ultimately has probably caused him more trauma than he wants to realize um they also talked about the infamous storyline of stephanie getting married to tess and then triple h end up breaking you know ruining the marriage with uh essentially drugging stephanie and marrying her without her knowing and consummating the marriage and uh shane initially didn't like the idea of vince kind of giving the alley hoop to triple h to talk to stephanie or stephanie should talk to triple h uh in a sense like shane didn't like the idea of um a wrestler talking to his sister or you know dating his sister and and not that vince was trying to pass off triple h to his daughter but he would say stuff like yeah you need someone like a triple h and that's kind of what happened and even during their wedding process their real life wedding process vince was trying to say maybe they should have the wedding on a pay-per-view and you know they should broadcast it and stephanie's like no we're not doing that. And Vince was like, oh, you're being selfish. So what does Vince do? Six days out of her wedding, six days removed from her wedding or six days until her wedding, he books himself to have a match with Stephanie in a street fight. This man is solely dedicated to the business, bro. He does not care about anything else. And that was the revolving theme of this particular episode is how dedicated Vince is to the business, bro. He doesn't care about nothing else except the business, getting ratings, getting money. That's all he cares about. Like, he even mentioned to Triple H when his own daughter was getting called a slut. He turned to Triple H and he's like, money sign. 
because he got the crowd involved. His own daughter was being called a slut. The infamous storyline with Trish coming into the business, you know, already in the, the McMahon feud and drugging Linda McMahon. And he's kissing, he's kissing Trish Stratus right in front of Linda. And it was all about the business. And once again, Shane wasn't a big fan of that storyline either. He didn't like that because, you know, that's his mom. And you can tell Shane was the one to try to, you know, maybe say, I don't know about this. You know, when it came to the immediate family, he didn't, he wasn't all the way comfortable with them being in the spotlight. But at the same time, he also knew that, you know, his dad was going to do what he felt like was best for the business. And when they had their match at WrestleMania 17, Shane was nervous. He didn't know. He's like, bro, I've never hit you. Like, you know, like I'm like not actively. I don't know if I can do this. And Vince legitimately smacking the crap out of him, you know. And that's when Shane was like, all right, bro, I, I guess I'm going to have to really hit your ass. Like, you know, that's how dedicated Vince was to the idea of business over everything. It even got to the point where Sable, and I forgot all about this, Sable ended up suing WWF at the time for $110 million, talked about she was forced to do things that she didn't like and was sexually assaulted and all this other stuff, only for Sable to come back. And then they use it in a storyline where Stephanie was like, this is the same person that sued, tried to sue WWF for $110 million and you brought her back? And then he was over there kissing on her and groping on her as well. I was just like, he does not care. That's why you never say never with Vince because he don't give a shit. This is someone tried to sue you for a lot of fucking money and you still bring them back because he didn't care because he knew people wanted to, you know, they would be interested in what happens on television. You know, Vince talked about his various affairs, I think, in a Playboy magazine. And I, I like the comment that Paul Heyman said. Paul Heyman said, Vince is in love. His only true love is the business. Everybody else he cares about, he has love for him. But his true love that he'll never cheat on is the business. And that plays into what we're going to talk about towards the end of this episode, which was really, really uh, kind of impactful what uh, Paul Heyman had discussed. Um, he talked about also you know, how he bought WCW for $2.5 million. And then, you know, they kind of went on, uh, obviously, with the, you know, bringing in WCW and how he felt, you know. For him, it wasn't like a, a sigh of, like, relief or like, you know, oh, yeah, man, I finally did it. It was like, all right, I expected to win. Now what's next? And I believe that's how he felt. He's like, I, I expect to win. All right, on to the next. He didn't get no super gratification. And the next thing was the XFL, which, you know, ended up failing miserably. It didn't, you know, it didn't last as long as Vince thought it would have. And at one point, <laughs> there was an interview that uh, Bob Costas uh, had with, uh, with Vince on the show. On his, you know, on the show at the time, and he was interviewing him, talking about the failures of of the XFL, and you can see the clip where Mister McMahon was getting closer because he was getting pissed off, and even in the uh, Netflix doc, he was like, "Bro, I was getting closer to him because I was envisioning myself choking this man out because he 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 got me, he suckered me in," and Bob Costas was like, "Well, I mean, you know." On the Netflix, Netflix doc, he's like, to be honest with you, I let him know I'm going to ask him some hard questions in the green room. But I was just being honest that it didn't work, which it ultimately didn't. They they tried to, you know, bring what worked with WWF over um, to uh, to sports, but it didn't pan out. Um, then also the, you know, they talked about the World Wildlife Fund forcing them to change their name because they technically had the name longer than WWF. So they had to change their name uh, to obviously WWE. And a lot of people feel like, oh, once they changed the WWE, um, the company would, you know, died essentially. I, I've seen those type of remarks. No, that's not the case per se. Once they went public, that's when things had to change, obviously, because investors were involved. So that's where the real change came from. Not because of the name. The name was subjective. It's the it's the the people that are investing in your company. They want to see some returns. They want to see certain things. 
and what they were doing in the attitude era wasn't going to fly with a lot of those investors so that was kind of what it was um then vince brought back hulk hogan after everything went down in wcw to have the the legendary match with the rock and how you know iconic that was and it once again vince looked at it it's like bro it's business yeah he hurt me with what happened with wcw but it's business that that's all he and it's funny that's the episode title of the episode family business but for him that's all that matters it doesn't matter if someone testified against him tried to sue him whatever it's business that's what that's what he cares about the most what are going to make the fans happy what's going to draw the most attention what's going to make the most money that's all he cares about and i even made note of that vince has always been about the business no matter what has happened to him in the past um they also talk about the infinite infamous ruthless aggression segment and how john cena came out there and had that you know infamous line of you know ruthless aggression towards kurt angle and um there was even a part where they asked was there any storyline too far they asked triple h that and triple h like hell yeah there was some storylines that was just like whoa and they asked steph that and steph like there's one but i'm not going to talk about it of course vince was like yeah uh so uh there was a story where steph would get vent uh steph would get pregnant and uh you know the uh Mr. McMahon character, not me, but the Mr. McMahon character was the one behind getting her pregnant. I'm just like, it, I like how he separated that. Like, ah, oh, nah, the Mr. McMahon character got her pregnant. But you're still her father, bro. Why would we do an incest angle? That was, ah, uh, awful. Awful. Just, it wasn't good. But Trish Stratus made a, a point. If you didn't do what Vince wanted you to do, there was a good chance you could get punished. And it wasn't safe just from his kids. Like he was much harder on his kids when it came to them coming up with ideas and stuff like that. And especially with Shane. And this is probably the most pivotal part of this particular episode. Um, Shane was, you know, was always the one trying to, you know, you know, really prove to his father that you know he could take over the company at one point he, he was talking about buying ufc at the moment they they had to offer to buy it but vince didn't want to because he didn't see the value in these um uh, these athletes you know these physical combat athletes at the time because he's like you know it's hard to get behind characters with them because once they get injured the career's done and he could have bought it but he didn't do it He's like, well, you know, if, if if Shane wanted to do it, he should have did it with his own money or whatever the case. And obviously, in hindsight, UFC is doing really well, you know, making, you know, it's a billion dollar company. So that's just a crazy thing to know that Shane was the one pushing for that. And this right here, the retelling of what uh, Paul Heyman had uh, seen uh, between a disagreement between Shane and man and Vince. This one's kind of. Wow, never knew about this. I was actually kind of shocked on this. So uh, I wanted to make sure I wrote this down. So Vince and Shane had a, a creative argument. And Vince told him, essentially, it's not going to happen, not while I'm alive. And he was eating, you know, some food at the time. And he told him, you know, he got a knife. And he, you know, pointed, to, you know, gave it to Shane. He was like, you're going to have to stab me. You're going to have to kill me right here in order for that to happen if you want that to happen you're gonna have to kill me if you don't do it then you're not man enough to do it which says a lot already and if that's not what you do want to do you can buy me out just like i did to my father and if i don't get out of your way you're gonna have to get rid of me just like i would have had to do to my father as well and after that shane ended up departing from wwe and that's just a wild thing to say to your son. You're going to have to kill me if you want to go through with this. If you don't do it, then you're not man enough, which lets me know that you're not ready to run this anyway. And if you do buy it from me, I'm not going to easily step down. And this really puts so many things in perspective on one, why Shane ended up leaving. Because they were butting heads. 
And it was getting to that point where he's like, man, it's best that I walk away. Kind of similar to what Vince McMahon Jr. was doing with Vince Sr., except Vince Sr. actually sold the company to him just to see what he could do. Vince was really not trying to. Didn't want to. Probably wasn't going to. Regardless, he wasn't giving it up. And like I said, it plays into the idea that Vince was not going to let go of his day-to-day -day position until he essentially physically couldn't do it no more or ended up dying. The only reason why he was a he stepped away is obviously because of what happened with the Janelle, Janelle Grant situation. And then once he ended up selling it, then they kicked him out anyway because of the whole Janelle Grant allegations and everything that's going on. And, you know, it was just kind of negative press. So it's very interesting because we kind of see he wasn't going to let go of this until essentially he died. That's it. He was not going to let go. He wasn't even going to concede to his son, his own son, own flesh and blood. Nope. He wasn't because he felt like no one can do a better job than what he's done with WWE. And that's very, very insane to really think about that. It put things in perspective. The same stuff, the same way he was fighting to get in the business and take over the business from his father. He wasn't going to allow that with Shane. Shane was going to have to be more ruthless than his dad. And you can tell Shane's not like that. If Shane had his way, a lot of the stuff we've seen with his family wouldn't have been on television. The whole affair stuff with Trish and everything else, it wouldn't have been on television. We know that to be true because Shane just doesn't operate like that. Vince does. And at the end of the day, for Vince, he loves his family, but he loves the business that much more. And now we're going to get to the last episode. And uh, it does seem like the last episode is going to be talking about, obviously, everything that's been going on recently with Vince more more you know more than likely with some of the previews I've seen them leading up to so I was like up oh, this one's gonna be uh probably the the spicier one of all the episodes but yeah I've been binge watching it like crazy I've been enjoying it I've had a day to I haven't really done nothing except watch this today and I've been enjoying it um so hey if you guys have been enjoying my little thoughts and opinions on each of these episodes of the Mystic Man documentary, y'all let me know down below how much y'all enjoying it. And, and, you know, if you enjoyed this particular episode as well, we got one more left and we're going to wrap this all up. So I appreciate all love support y'all showing on channel road to 150k. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See y'all next one. Peace.